love him so when he flips that dough he's pizza boy usa what is up you guys welcome back to another one if you are new to the channel i am Will pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we are in the new 2020 dodge durango courtesy of statler dodge jeep ram in york pa for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below and so i wanted to check out this one because you guys requested it for one also this is a truly american made suv 100 percent made in detroit zero percent financing for 84 months going on right now may not be when you guys are actually watching this video but as of now that is a heck of a deal let me tell you but so anyways let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing it said there will be several different trim levels available for the 2020 dodge durango first one being sxt starting at thirty thousand. $795 SXT Plus for $34,990 GT for $34,995 GT Plus for $39,495 Citadel for $42,995 RT which actually is the one we have today starting at $44,395 Citadel Anodized Platinum for $46,270 and lastly the SRT Beast of an SUV $62,995 and so for all of that pricing that was all for the rear wheel drive configuration with the exception of that last trim level that comes standard all wheel drive if you wanted to add all wheel drive to any of those trims but the last one simply add twenty six hundred dollars to any of those prices and so as you can imagine with that many trim levels there are a few different engine configurations available for the durango as well and so but the first engine configuration belonging to all trim levels but the rt and the srt is going to be a 3.6 liter naturally aspirated v6 putting out 293 horsepower at 6400 rpm 260 pound feet of torque available at 4000 rpm sent to the rear wheels or all wheels through an eight speed automatic with paddle shifters if you go with the gt trim level and up and zero to 60 time for that one comes in at approximately 7.4 seconds with mpg numbers coming in at 19 city 26 highway for the rear wheel drive 18 city 25 on the highway for the all wheel drive configuration and but so then the next engine configuration belonging to the trim level that we have today being the rt is going to be a 5.7 liter naturally aspirated hemi v8 putting out 300 60 horsepower around 5100 rpm 390 pound feet of torque approximately 4200 rpm set to rear wheels or all wheels through an eight speed automatic with paddle shifters once again and zero to 60 time for this particular engine configuration comes in at 6.2 seconds which we will be testing out in a little bit here with mpg numbers coming in at 14 in the city 22 highway for the rear wheel drive and the exact same thing for the all-wheel drive so just get the all-wheel drive configuration for this one so last engine configuration belonging to the srt 6.4 liter hemi v8 475 horsepower at 6,000 rpm 470 pound feet of torque available at 4300 rpm sent to all four wheels through the eight speed automatic zero to 60 time approximately 4.7 seconds which is ridiculous for a three row suv and mpg numbers coming in at 13 in the city 19 on the highway and so before we do the paddle shifter test the acceleration test i did want to mention to you guys the drive modes so depending upon the trim level that you go with will depend upon the drive modes that you actually get but ultimately drive modes available are going to be normal eco sport track snow and valet and you can imagine the track is going to be reserved for the srt i see the sport button just in front of the shifter here we're going to go ahead and hit that before we do any kind of acceleration test but ultimately those drive modes will adjust things like the throttle response shift points the suspension damping steering sensitivity and the traction control systems or electronic stability control so having mentioned all of that now let's go ahead and press that sport button there and let's go ahead and get set up let's do a quick little paddle shifter test here first let's see how quickly these paddle shifters are actually going to react for us here all right so we got our straight away you ready guys three two one go Whoa. Definitely quick, definitely quick. I always like to see if I can hear an engine pop or an engine sound when I hit the paddle shifters when it switches gears, but nothing like that, but the paddle shifters are ridiculously quick. The second you hit them, it immediately changes gears, so absolutely no issues for me whatsoever. And by the way, when I did that paddle shifter test, I slid the shifter all the way to the back and to the left. That actually gave me full control of the shifting and the Durango is still not shifting for me until I slide it back to the right, of course. But 
that is pretty cool to have a manual shift mode there in case you wanted to play around or in case you wanted to use the Durango for engine braking in the snow perhaps. But having done that now, let's do a quick little acceleration test here, giving full control back to the Durango and let's see how quickly this Durango here can get us up to speed. And out we go. Whoa, nice sound. I think it's loud. <laughs> Wow, certainly no issues of merging onto the highway. This thing is a beast. That was fun. Not expected for a three row SUV, quite honestly, but still zero to 60 at 6.2 is pretty darn quick. It's not gonna be the SRT kind of quick, but still plenty of an acceleration with merging onto the highway, or even for having some fun in a three row SUV which is kind of an oxymoron. So, But so anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so as you can imagine, there will be slightly different configurations for the braking dependent upon the trim levels that you go with. And so for example, for the SXT and GT trim levels, you will find 13 inch ventilated front and rear discs. For the Citadel and RT, you will find 13.8 inch ventilated front discs, 13 inch solid rear discs. And for the SRT up front, you're gonna get 15 inch ventilated front discs with 13 0.8 inch rear disc Brembo calipers by the way for that setup finished in red that is pretty cool as far as the braking feel goes it surprised me actually it's a little bit on the softer side and so I guess with three row SUVs that's pretty standard but with the RT and the SRT I would have expected it to be a little bit firmer I guess you could say because they are a little bit sportier in nature yet still three row SUVs but it is definitely a softer braking feel which again isn't a bad thing it's just expected differently since it's a three row SUV SUV, that's all. Touching on suspension and handling, up front you're going to get a short and long arm front suspension, in the back independent multi-link rear suspension. As far as the ride quality goes, as we are going over that massive speed bump. That is one of the things I have always said whenever I review a Durango. It's absolutely amazing. It's an incredibly smooth ride compared to a lot of the other three row SUVs out there. I will say that. As far as steering feel goes, it's perfectly fine, especially when you change up the driving mode that does adjust that a little bit as well. So if you put in that sport driving mode steering feel is going to be a bit weightier than it otherwise would be so a little something for everybody there as far as cabin noise goes it's been perfectly fine for me especially when you hit the gas i love the sound this thing makes this hemi engine makes when you really get on the gas it's absolutely wonderful but so touching on visibility i actually can see perfectly fine i will say this third row headrest can be pushed down which i did before i started driving this one because if you don't have any third row passengers it's always a good thing to do to increase visibility although with a third row headrest up i'm sure you're gonna have some issues a little bit more issues at least with visibility but without that i can see perfectly fine so absolutely no issues for me whatsoever rain sensing windshield wipers actually do come standard on the citadel trim level and up essentially what that is is when the durango detects any kind of mist or rainfall it is going to automatically turn on those windshield wipers for you one less thing you got to worry about so you can better focus more of your attention on actually enjoying the drive so that is a big old plus there as well but that is about it for the performance segment of this review, guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of this beautiful 2020 Dodge Durango. And so here she is, you guys, the 2020 Dodge Durango finished in a granite clear coat exterior for anybody who is curious on this one. Let's go ahead and start up front because the front end is going to differ slightly depending upon the trim level that you go with. For example, you will find chrome crossbar style front grille if you were to go with the SXT trims or the Citadel trim actually as well. Otherwise, you will get the black mesh front grille you're currently looking at belonging to the GT, RT, and SRT trim levels actually. And let me show you guys up top here on the hood, there's actually functional hood ventilation, not only in the front, but also on the sides here. This all assists with engine cooling to keep the engine from overheating. So I love that the Durango comes with this, especially since it's got that Hemi under the hood. But anyways, taking a look at the headlights now, halogen headlights come with the SXT trims and the GT trims. HID headlights come with the Citadel trims, RT, SRT. And of course, regardless of which headlight configuration you go with, you will find the automatic feature, meaning when it starts to get dark out at night, those headlights are going to turn on automatically for you there. And you will find LED daytime running lights just below those headlight bezels as well. And then just below it all, fog lights in the halogen form for the SXT trims and the Citadel trim levels. LED fog lights belonging to the GT trims, RT, and SRT trim levels. But now, let's go ahead and make our way now to the side of the Durango here. Roof rails coming standard with the SXT Plus and Citadel trim levels. Rear privacy glass, of course, standard across the board there. 
Taking a look at the side mirrors, they are body colored power adjustable heated side mirrors for every single trim level. And if you were to go with the Citadel trim level and up, you're actually gonna get LED integrated turd signals as well. Take a look down at the bottom, you will find matte black side skirts for the SXT trim levels. However, if you were to go with the GT trim level and up, you're actually gonna get body colored side skirts, which look a heck of a lot better, in my personal opinion, a little more high end look to them. Take a look down at the wheel setup, 18 by eight inch aluminum alloys for the SXT trims. 20 by 8 inch alloy wheels for the GT Citadel and RT trim levels and 20 by 10 inch gloss black double five spoke wheels a little wider configuration there for the SRT trim level for a little extra grip seeing as the power is ridiculous so and of course you got that Hemi badging on the front fender seeing as we have the Hemi engine here today that's going to of course apply to the RT and the SRT trim levels but now let's go ahead and make our way to the back of the Durango shark fin antenna up top there as expected just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light you got a rear window wiper of course as well and then what Dodge kind of pioneered i would say is the led racetrack style taillight setup i absolutely love it now everybody's trying to copy off of dodge in my opinion but anyways dodge badging within those taillights of course and a single exhaust for the sxt trim level let me get down a little bit lower here so i can show you guys dual exhaust outlets with chrome tips for the gt trims citadel and rt trim levels and of course srt is going to give you slightly larger exhaust outlets as well but nonetheless i think you guys know what we have to do next as always here is that exhaust clip. been now since we are around back when it comes to opening that rear lift gate there is a button on the key fob itself you simply press that twice that is one way to go ahead and open it up it's also a button on the lift gate itself as well and by the way it is a power lift gate if you go with the gt plus trim level and up otherwise it is a manual lift gate so i did want to mention that as well but nonetheless once opened up cargo capacity behind that third row comes in at 17.2 cubic feet if you were to fold that down behind the second row it bumps it up to 47.7 cubic feet and with all rows folded coming in at 84.5 cubic feet so definitely a decent amount back there pretty on par for the course it's right around with the honda pilot and toyota highlander are so but it did what also mention you do have grocery hooks back there you do have cargo tie down anchors you do have a good bit of in-floor storage back there as well so a ton going on in that cargo area really just about everything you would need back there but making our way to the rear legroom third row legroom comes in at 31.5 inches so for reference i am an even six feet tall this is how much space I had back there. I did want to mention there are two seats in the third row of the Durango. Sometimes three row SUVs come with three seats. Sometimes it comes with two. So wanted to mention that though, but also rear ventilation coming standard on the roof or the ceiling of the Durango here for all three rows. So all three rows are always comfortable. So that's always good too. But making our way now to the second row, 38.6 inches when it comes to that rear leg room. Again, six feet tall. This is how much space I had back there. Also, when it comes to that second row, you can get it either with a bench seating configuration or captain's chairs meaning three or two seats it's completely up to you did what I also mentioned though for that second row you can get rear heated seats for the gt plus trim level and up so if you're the type of person that wants to spoil your kids with some heated seats that's going to be there for you there but dodge didn't stop there with this particular configuration at least you also get dual usb charging ports there is a 115 volt power outlet to charge up tools or hair dryer or whatever this particular durango that we have today has the optional dvd slash blu-ray player configuration with those two tablet style screens asphyxiated to the back of the front seat headrests that goes for $1,995, but of course you can play DVDs or Blu-rays. And quite honestly, that is a brilliant idea. And yes, the kids can use tablets, I suppose, in the back, but I gotta say this is pretty darn cool as well. But nonetheless, let's go ahead and make our way up now to the front seats, manually adjustable cloth seating coming with the SXT, eight-way power driver's seat with the SXT Plus and GT trims. GT Plus is actually going to add to that heated front seats, a power adjustable passenger seat, and there will be a suede leather combination for that as well including the rt trim level although a full leather seating is optional there citadel actually adds that full leather seating as well and the citadel anodized platinum does give you ventilated front seats 
added on to that. So quite a bit going on with the seating, I guess you could say. But so then taking a look at the steering wheel, it is tilt and telescoping. It is leather wrapped for all trims. Also decent 10 and two grips, a little bit on the thicker side, not quite as thick as BMW, but definitely a little thicker grips than you're used to in three row SUVs at least. So I do like that. And take a look at the startup. Let me first start by showing you guys the key here. You do have your Dodge logo on the one side and when you flip it over, lock, unlock the button to pop the rear hatch. And then the times two button is going to be a remote start. Start, and that actually comes with the GT Plus trim level and up, meaning you can start up the Durango without actually being inside of it. So you could heat it or pull it down before you actually get inside. So that's always good. But all trim levels are going to give you a push button start located just by the driver's right knee. So all I'm going to do is simply put my foot in the brake and press that engine start button there. It's open that once started up a very large digital display front and center, but tachometer on the left, speedometer front and center and then your fuel information and engine temp is going to be to the right but to control what is on that large digital display you actually have steering wheel mounted controls found on the left side there giving you different safety information how many miles you have left until you hit empty when you need your next oil change of course you could set up a digital speedometer up there if you wanted to that's probably what i would leave it on but ultimately very customizable so you could really configure it to whatever your liking is there Touching on overall interior quality, a power sunroof comes with the Citadel trim levels. However, it is available for the SRT and GT Plus trim levels and the RT that we have today. So that is what you're looking at right now. Dual zone climate control comes standard on all trim levels. Also, the Citadel anodized platinum gets somewhat of a simulated suede headliner. That's pretty cool there. Overhead sunglass holder coming standard across the board. And there actually are garage door openers for up to three different garage doors found just in front of that overhead sunglass holder as well. And I I do like the imitation carbon fiber look just on top of the passenger side glove box it does tie into the doors but i absolutely love the black red color combination that we have in this particular durango makes it look so stinking cool i love that the seats are all completely red such a nice look to this one but just in front of the shifter you have a 12 volt power outlet dual usb charging ports auxiliary port just behind that you'll have dual cup holders a little bit of storage area there as well and within that center armrest because we have that rear entertainment configuration there actually is a slot to put in the blu-ray right there in case you're wondering where you're going to go ahead and do that and there's a 12 volt power outlet there and just a little bit of storage there too but that is where you're going to find that but now let's go ahead and make our way to the tech display seven inch color touchscreen display coming with the sxt and gt trim levels 8.4 inch color touchscreen display coming with the citadel trim level and up and that is of course what you are looking at right now actually bluetooth and audio streaming come standard either way android auto apple carplay also standard either way so really you have free navigation even on the sxt trim level of the durango because of that so i love that factory navigation system is available as an option if you wanted it you could check out your climate control information up there as well and of course your radio information and so by the way when it comes to the sound systems on this one six speakers coming with the sxt trims the gt trim levels nine speakers coming with the citadel rt and srt trims however there is an optional sound system that we do indeed have here today being the 19 speaker harman kardon sound system which goes for 900 95 dollars 800 plus watts i am quite excited to test this one out you guys know we always have to let's go ahead and turn on the radio see what we got playing today and let's test out the clarity of this one crazy amount of bass with that sound system my goodness bowers and wilkins is still my number one just because of the clarity there but dang that is plenty of clarity ridiculous amount of bass it almost rumbles the seats definitely rumbling my feet on the floor of the Durango gear so that was absolutely amazing not sure if you need that kind of a sound system in a three-row SUV but it's freaking awesome if you did want it but so then last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on that tech display is when you do put the Durango in reverse you will find a rear view camera across the board letting you know who or what is behind you which is always is going to lead us into safety and so to start front side and side curtain airbags will come standard in the back you're going to have latch aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats also rear child door locks back there there is a blind spot monitor with a rear cross traffic alert that comes as an option for 495 dollars if you wanted to go that route 
Also, there is a technology group that goes for $2,495. That gives you adaptive cruise control with stop and go, advanced brake assist for collision warning, and lane departure warning as well. And so, but when it comes down to it, in the end, my final thoughts of the 2020 Dodge Durango, incredibly smooth ride. I say that every single year I review the Durango. It really is a very nice smooth ride, especially for its class. It's not even a luxury SUV, but really the ride is wonderful love that sound system in this thing. I'm surprised a three-row SUV even offers a sound system like that. So a big fan of that. Very nice digital gauge setup. Very nice power with this Hemi V8. I guess that's to be expected, right? Wouldn't have minded if the blind spot monitoring system came standard on this one. That is one of those safety features I think should at least be standard on three-row SUVs as it is quite often on other three-row SUVs in its segment. Also would have minded some rear window sunshades in the back as well. Of course, we don't have them here on our RT trim level either, but ultimately a very, very solid pick here. Love that it's 100% made here in the US, made in Detroit, so love that as well. And again, a very smooth ride. I think that's always the first thing I noticed in this one, but that about rounds out this review, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there if you like. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold. Stay gold.